Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. And today we'll be talking about one of the Empire's more interesting fleets from Star Wars Legends, the Crimson Command. The Crimson Command appears primarily in Darksaber, but does get some more fleshing out in other expanded universe material, including, of course, the Essential Guide to Warfare. And the Crimson Command was interesting for a couple of reasons. For one, the base ship of the Crimson Command was not actually the Imperial Star Destroyer. It was something Something different, which I'll discuss in just a moment. And many of the ships of the Crimson Command were, well, painted crimson. They were red, making the fleet literally stand out from the rest of the Imperial Navy. So let's get some backstory. As the Essential Guide to Warfare explains, the beginning of the Crimson Command can be traced to one of the most nefarious Imperials of all time, Warlord Zinge. Zinge was an incredibly gifted officer. He was very intelligent and also very power hungry. He rose to prominence in the Quelly sector, eventually becoming Grand Moth and also High Admiral of the Crimson Command. As he rose through prominence, Zinge was known for captaining a Victory Class Star Destroyer, a ship that was seen outdated and underpowered to many Imperials. But after becoming High Admiral of the Crimson Command and also achieving the rank of Warlord of the Empire, Zinge's forces were reinforced with 100 refitted Victory Class Star Destroyers and the Super Star Destroyer Brawl, which he would later call the Iron Fist. At some point, perhaps after his death, Warlord Zinge would lose control of the Crimson Command, which was one of, if not the largest Imperial fleets in the galaxy, and his forces would make their way largely to Truton Teradoc, who was one of the final Imperial Warlords and who was holding out in the Deep Core and fighting other Warlords in that area. We learn about the Crimson Command in Darksaber, as Admiral Dala is attempting to unify the remaining Imperial Warlords. Darksaber explains that the Crimson Command is not just a name, but the Victory Star Destroyers in that fleet are literally made out of a Crimson Alloy. These red vessels, the Crimson Command, as led by the Victory Star Destroyer, the 13X, were, as I mentioned, holed up in the Deep Core, sometimes literally garrisoned in hollowed out asteroids to protect against other Imperial Warlords, including most notably Blitzer Hunt. Under the command of Teradoc, the Crimson Command did not operate like a standard Imperial fleet. Teradoc seemed to be overwhelmingly aggressive, perhaps because he often had a numbers advantage. He would be willing to throw away Victory Star Destroyers on suicide runs, or if it meant taking out an enemy ISD. On one occasion, literally a hundred of the Victory Star Destroyers attacked the Shockwave, which was an upgrade Imperial Star Destroyer on the flagship of Blitzer Hursk, just destroying it under their overwhelming firepower. Eventually, although the fleet's numbers had been whittled down, Admiral Dalla took control of the Crimson Command and the remaining assets of the Deep Core Imperial Warlord. This was after Toss Beacon. Dalla had been trying to unify the various Warlord factions, but the strife had just run too deep. So, in the end, she killed all of them and alongside Pelion, took control of a large portion of the Empire's military power. The Crimson Command was reconstituted as a part of Dalla's larger fleet, which now was no longer made up of red starships. Dalla was using Imperial class Star Destroyers at this point. There were smaller escort ships. She also had the Night Hammer, a black Super Star Destroyer. Under her control, the Crimson Command and the rest of Dalla's fleet raided the New Republic. This was not something new to Dalla, as she had previously launched guerrilla campaigns against the New Republic after her re-emergence from the Maw installation. This was also something done by Admiral Thrawn, and Dizani Isard, and by the time Dala was ready to attack Luke's Jedi Praxium, her fleet numbered over 100 large capital ships, including ISDs, Victory Star Destroyers, and more. During the attack itself, a portion of the fleet was actually repelled due to the combined force powers of Jedi on the surface of Yavin at Luke's Jedi Praxium, and another portion of the fleet, including the Crimson Command, was actually destroyed when Admiral Akbar and a small New Republic task force, including NMC-90, the Galactic Voyager, showed up to provide reinforcements. What happened to the Crimson Command after that point is unknown. It may have just scattered to the wind. Most likely elements of it joined the Imperial Remnant under the control of Admiral Pelion, who took command after Dala's disastrous campaign against the New Republic, culminating with the Battle of Yavin. But we don't know explicitly where the ships went, whether they were recolored to fit in better or what. Still, 100 Victory Star 
Star Destroyers is a very significant fighting force, and it's quite different than a standard Imperial fleet, which used the ISD as the main ship of the line. Victory Star Destroyers are sometimes portrayed as being significantly slower than ISDs. However, Darksaber explains, probably because these ships were updated, that the Crimson Command was actually far more mobile and flexible than your standard Imperial fleet. In Legends, the Victory Star Destroyer debuted during the Clone War, so it was a pretty old Star Destroyer model and was also significantly smaller than the ISD. 900 meters versus 1.6 kilometers, so almost half the size. Still, the Victory Star Destroyer was more powerful than pretty much any ship used in the galaxy outside of some very large Rebel cruisers during its heyday. It had significant turbo laser weaponry, and the Victory 1 in particular also made use of a ton of concussion missile launchers, which is kind of unique for a Star Destroyer. This thing relied really heavily on missiles and other similar weaponry. We don't know whether it was Victory 1 or 2s in the Crimson Command, it may have been a mix of both. Both ships came out during the Clone Wars and both would have probably needed refitting to be brought up to a hyper-modernized standard. But on the other hand, Victory Star Destroyers remained very important throughout the galaxy far, far beyond the end of the Clone Wars. Thrawn routinely used Victory Class Star Destroyers alongside Dreadnought Class Heavy Cruisers, Strike Cruisers, and other smaller vessels. The New Republic made use of Victories up until the Yuuzhan Vong War, and the successor state, the Galactic Alliance, actually refitted Victories, with a famous ship known as the Admiral Akbar being a quite important part of their fleet. But guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Crimson Command, one of the more interesting parts of Darksaber, a book that generally I don't like a whole lot. But if you guys want to know something more about just something I discussed in this video, let me know down in the comments. Is there something that I haven't covered in a prior video that you think deserves some time and attention? Let me know all of that and more down in the comment section. Also, I'm going to try to get back to answering hashtag ask at questions. I've been a little weird during January for those who don't know. January is an off month for YouTube, especially if you're a Star Wars YouTuber. Not only are views significantly low, but you don't really make very much money at all. So I've been taking it kind of easy and streaming a lot more. Things will start to return to normal pretty soon now that it's February and moving on into the spring and summer. But guys, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.